Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm coming to you from my kitchen, so I thought I would share some different ideas and foods um, that I would recommend to boost your immune system. So I am a full-time faculty in the life sciences department. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I'm specifically board certified in sports nutrition. So a lot of the, um, the words I use like anti-inflammatories um, are all kind of related from my background in sports nutrition, but for the purposes of enhancing the immune system. So I'm gonna get started with the presentation. And I don't want this to turn into a lecture, um, but we do talk about nutrition and the immune system and why it's so important in our um, nutrition science courses. Because um, if we have a weakened um, immunity, so for whatever reason, bacteria or in the age of COVID, a virus, um, any toxins, any food proteins that um, cause allergies, our role of the immune system is to fight off these foreign invaders. So if we see that the immune system has been impaired, that allows infectious diseases to enter your body. So our job is to make sure that we have everything we have internally inside our bodies to fight any foreign invaders that enter. So my background is also in pediatrics and I worked at Children's Hospital and we would see children that were um, malnourished. And the definition of malnourishment isn't necessarily um, wasted away because they aren't getting enough nutrition. It could also be the opposite where you could have a, a healthy weight individual, but they're technically considered malnourished, meaning they're not just get, they're not getting enough nutrients every day. So malnourishment, we've actually seen, and it's sort of that paradigm, um, overweight, obese children deal with malnourishment as well as underweight. So that could basically lump us all into that group we could have a poor diet and still be healthy weight uh, or overweight. So your weight really isn't an indication of whether or not you're malnourished. So if we have disease, infection, some type of injury internally, and we are malnourished, this equals basically a downward spiral that has to be broken. Because in order for the body to recover, we have to have optimal nutrition. So optimal immunity depends on optimal nutrition. So I'll speak specifically about certain nutrients that are really critical to the immune system and I won't go over each one's role, but you probably have heard some of these like probiotics. Um, we're, we're learning a lot about the microbiome of and, and the environment of the GI tract. And so we're also learning about its role in the immune system. When you have a healthy digestive tract, you also have a healthy immune system. So whenever you notice symptoms like um, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, bloating, that usually means the environment of the GI tract, your gastrointestinal tract, isn't healthy. So try to add more um, fermented food products into the diet is a really good way. And we'll talk about like real life application in a minute. Protein is key. Um, when we're dealing with injury or infection, we need proteins. They're responsible for maintaining the barriers like skin um, that allow viruses to enter, but we also want to make sure that we have enough protein to create antibodies. And antibodies are those proteins that are going to fight disease. So you'll see like um, vitamin A is also responsible for antibody production. Um, protein in the United States typically isn't an issue, 
but we do see it when a, a patient, a person is in recovery that we have to bump up protein uh, intake just to get them through that process. So uh, I wouldn't, so when, you, when I say incorporate these nutrients into the diet, many of you are already doing that. So I don't want you to add more. <laughs> like, oh, she said I need protein to help. So I added, you know, more protein because too much protein isn't a good thing. So we, it's really about recovery. So this is when a person is injured. Uh, Omega-3s, big one. Omega-3s help with anti-inflammatory responses. Now, the immune system is very interesting because initial response to any type of injury in the body um, will cause what we call acute inflammation. So immediately these cells run, they rush to wherever that pathogen, that bacteria, the virus is, and they want to attack. So that does cause inflammation in that area, but it's short lived. So we want that to happen. So that's a good inflammatory response to fight infection, but we don't want inflammation to be chronic. So chronic is long-term. And what we're finding out are diseases of inflammation are our top leading causes of death in the United States. Heart disease is still number one. So our latest data from the CDC is showing um, heart disease and cancer still our top two. And now 2020 data, we now have COVID. So this is going to um, kind of be, they anticipate it will be part of the top three leading causes of death in our country. So inflammation, we see type two diabetes, a chronic disease also caused by inflammation, heart disease, we see inflammation um, and some cancers. So our top 10 leading causes of death actually have a lot of inflammation going on in the body. So this long-term inflammatory response is not good. We can't sustain it. It actually can damage uh, tissues and it could damage um, cells in your body. So we're trying to kind of reduce the inflammation long-term. So vitamin A, I already mentioned, vitamin D. Vitamin D has gotten so much press during COVID because they're starting to see, well, we already knew it had an immune system role, but they're starting to try to see a relationship between vitamin D intake and um, COVID deaths. Meaning those that had low vitamin D were more susceptible to COVID or dying from COVID. That's really hard to prove because there's so many other factors related to COVID. So um, the data is just trying to show, does vitamin D play a role? The last study I just saw, it was released on Monday, was related to African-American males and their vitamin D um, levels and their susceptibility to COVID. I've learned in life, uh, being a dietitian for the last 25 years, that once we hear things in the media, um, fat is good, fat is bad, you know, carbs are good, carbs are evil, then we all kind of jump on the ship. Instead of taking a, a, a broader perspective, recognizing we have essential nutrients that we need to incorporate into the diet, and it should just be a well-balanced plan. When we look at epidemiological studies, so long-term following groups of people, we look at the patterns of diet. So what did they eat as a group of people? And we follow them for a couple of years. So we could see dietary patterns instead of, you know, red wine is good for you, olive oil is good for you. Th those all can be true, but what else is in their diet? As Americans, we have a lot of things in our diet that aren't so good for you. Today, I wanna to focus on what you should be adding and incorporating in the diet, but I also wanna recognize that uh, we have other foods in our diet like sugar, uh, high fats, and um, alcohol that seem to be playing a role in inflammation as well. So vitamin E and C are antioxidants and these antioxidants are very protective uh, against what we call free radicals. So these highly charged particles 
that are roaming around in your body that can cause some damage to your cells. In this case, antioxidants can help block that. Vitamins um, E, C, beta carotene, um, we have uh, selenium. These are all examples of antioxidants. And I want to talk about today, what are some phytonutrients and chemicals? So besides the vitamins, what else is in plant-based foods that can be protective for us? And the last one is zinc. And zinc um, has always played a role in immunity. It helps play a role in um, antibody production, but it also helps uh, any injury, any infection, it's uh, one of those powerful nutrients that we usually combine when we see patients that are injured, that broke legs, that have skin lesions. Uh, zinc is one of those nutrients that will bump up as well. Okay, so I want to um, throw out a question to you as I move. I really want to focus in on antioxidants today. I think they're very powerful and what we're learning more and more every day is wonderful. So if you could just place in the chat what you think a fruit or vegetable that's rich in antioxidants, just pick one or two and I would like to see what you all are coming up with. Actually, Cyrus, oh no. Cyrus, can you um, can you read some of the chat? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So we got a, a couple of good um, uh, options. We got pomegranates, blueberries, oranges, apples, oranges and apples, wild blueberries, oranges, blueberries. Um, wow, uh, real a really great uh, uh, array of berries <laughs> and citrus. Yeah, lots of berries. <laughs> Does anyone have any ideas for vegetables? Oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll uh, show you some of the, the data that we have. Okay, so we have yep. fruits and we have vegetables, right? So um, berries definitely on the list. Um, back in the day, probably about 20 years ago, the USDA would rank fruits and vegetables based on their um, ability to absorb free radicals. It was called an ORAC score. And um, some of these are still from that list, but apples have definitely jumped uh, on the list as well. I just put sort of 10 um, that are high, but apples are always on the list. Um, if you look every type of berry you'll see is on the list. So my morning routine is um, some Greek yogurt, any type of berry. I have blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. <laughs> I have every berry. Um, I would like to emphasize that sometimes it is more expensive. So I'll also buy um, frozen. So frozen is always a good option, especially if you're going to make a smoothie or something, you want it a little chilled and icy. So frozen uh, fruits are an option as well. Oranges, definitely on the list. Um, and prunes, notice prunes and raisins. So we're looking at dry fruit, which would be a little more concentrated. But, you know, I grew up in the 70s where my mom would make us drink prune juice <laughs> every morning. It was very important to her. So uh, I don't know how popular that is nowadays, but um, I do know dates have definitely made a comeback. So, uh, and raising, you know, a lot of people avoided dry fruit because it was so much sugar. So, right, it's concentrated and very sweet, um, but a little bit <laughs> here and there isn't such a bad idea. All right, I wanna focus on the last two, <laughs> red grapes and cherries. Of course, I'm doing immune system and I'm coughing, but that's because I'm talking too much. So um, cherries, I'm gonna pull my camera so you could see um, some other food. So here are the berries I was talking about. I add those to my Greek yogurt. Tart cherry juice. I buy the concentrate, it's a little cheaper. Um, 
and I just make my own. But tart cherry juice, we use this a lot for athletes. So I just, um, depending on, it's, it's two tablespoons for every cup. So I just have this available. Tart cherry, ter cherry juice is actually very, very tart. So I like to, um, and for athletes, we we're doing a lot of research on tart cherry juice as an antioxidant, but because it's so tart, a lot of athletes, we have like light versions available for athletes. They say it's also good for muscle recovery. So I add like a little bit of orange juice to it. And then um, I pound this because lately being on Zoom and, you know, online 10 hours a day or whatever we're doing, um, my back is killing me. So I'm drinking this every single night. And the research is showing it also helps with insomnia. So it's a good evening type of drink. So I'll have this. Um, in, in the evening, usually after dinner, I'll just pound it um, because I'm trying to see like, well, the antioxidants are there. So there's a benefit. Um, it also can, you know, if research is, is right and we're learning more and more about, this could be one of those anti-inflammatory beverages. So I've added uh, this to my evening routine just to see if it could help with muscle recovery. Based on the research that I've read, it looks pretty promising. Um, the thing with some of these um, like tart cherry juice, it can interact with medications. So if you're on any medication, you want to make sure you discuss it with a physician before you like, oh, I heard tart cherry juice and you're drinking gallons of it and then you have an interaction. So we don't want that to happen. So uh, the cherries are making a comeback and I love cherries. Um, just to eat them naturally as well. Okay, the vegetable side, we've got spinach. I'm going to give you a, a recipe today to um, that'll incorporate a smoothie with uh, spinach. So we'll talk about that. Of course, broccoli, beets, we've also always recommended um, for as anti-inflammatory. Um, and then you see things like eggplant, Brussels sprouts, kale, of course, is on the list. Kale's been on this list for 20 years. So the fact that it, it now becomes one of those vegetables that people are really adding to their diet on a daily basis, it's really good to see that it's being recognized more than just a decoration at a salad bar. Okay, are there any questions so far? I can't, um, I've got too many things going on. No, okay. All right, so super fruits. Was there a question? No. Superfruits, um, I see it as a marketing um, strategy, superfoods, superfruits, super everything. Um, they are expensive. They're also sometimes hard to find. Someone mentioned pomegranates. Pomegranates are wonderful, um, very rich in antioxidants. And when they're in season, very uh, good to add when they're not in season. We just sometimes buy some juice, um, which is pretty powerful as well. I'm trying to like avoid a lot of juices, but because of the era of COVID, I've actually switched to adding it more into my diet because I could just drink it really easily um, if pomegranates aren't available. So. I just try to get in. And when I say juices, I usually drink, I'm not kidding, two to four ounces. It's a very small amount and I just chug it. Um, and it's it's one way I can easily get in a lot of superfood. My son has actually taught me a lot. He works for an organic, a very popular organic uh, smoothie shop and they make acai bowls and he puts goji fruits on top, fresh coke, like he's actually like cutting the coconuts, <laughs> taking out the coconut meat and, you know, draining out the coconut water. So they, they really pride themselves in getting fresh foods. And so I get to eat these, uh, but it's not because I'm buying them. I don't think I would 
invest my money into this area if I could just get it from, you know, regularly cost uh, fruits and vegetables. Okay, so if I were to give a recommendation for foods that are anti-inflammatory, this would be the list. Uh, salmon, so salmon rich in omega-3s, so we talked about those as anti-inflammatories, but also a good protein source. We should be incorporating more fish into the diet, so if we could get at least two to three servings, whether it's tuna or salmon, um, working with college students, I even tell them canned versions are available, so you can get canned salmon if times are hard and you can't afford to buy fresh. Personally, I'm a big Costco fan, so you could get uh, fish, even if it's frozen, for a relatively inexpensive price when you do it per uh, serving. So if I could get eight salmon fillets out of a bag of, from Costco, I feel like I've, I've uh, scored. So I definitely take advantage of, of things that I can buy at lower cost. Walnuts, almonds, any other nuts are really good to add to your diet as a snack. Um, not only do they provide protein, but they're also some calcium, some vitamin E, which we mentioned as an antioxidant. So these could be really um, good to incorporate into your diet. We mentioned beets, berries, of course, dark leafy greens, whole grains, um, olive oil and flaxseed. One of the ways I incorporate flaxseed into my diet is um, I, I put this on my yogurt in the morning. So I buy pumpkin seed and flaxseed granola. And it actually, I just put like one or two tablespoons. It adds a little bit of sweetness and, um, and I'm getting my seeds, especially the flaxseed and pumpkin seed. So that could be um, a way that you could incorporate that. You could also, of course, use olive oil um, in your cooking or in your salad. I mentioned the cherries, soybeans, of course, great uh, plant-based protein and um, low-fat dairy. And that would be my example is uh, yogurt that I incorporate into the diet. Many people have moved to plant-based milks. Uh, oat milk is now really popular. So you could always get your vitamin D and your calcium from other sources if you don't or can't tolerate cow's milk or don't like it. Okay, so the question is food or supplements. You probably know what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna tell you why. So if you look at a vitamin C supplement, you're getting about 500 milligrams of vitamin C, which is fine, but I don't know if you know, you only need about 70 to 95 milligrams a day. So it's a lot of vitamin C, but some people say, well, you know, I'll just take more, more is better, <laughs> right? That's our philosophy sometimes. So I say go for the fruits because you can get from a cup of strawberries, 80 milligrams, which meets your daily requirement, three grams of protein, the phytonutrients work with the vitamin C to increase antioxidant activity. So we have ellagic acid, we have flavonoids, and these, the colors, right? The colors like proanthocyanins, those are actually um, what's found in plant that has the antioxidant activity. But I just saw a study done on berries and um, memory. So they're doing research to see, okay, we know that blueberries, they've done a lot of research on blueberries and dementia, blueberries and Alzheimer's. So now they're starting to see just memory in general. And they're studying a elderly population that is um, in the UK and then also in the US to see, is there an improvement in memory function when berries are incorporated because of the specific antioxidant. 
Okay, so I always go for um, foods. Citrus, we mentioned oranges and uh, cherry juice. They're called monoterpenes, and these are um, can inhibit cancer growth for their antioxidant activity. Cherries also contain the anthocyanins, which are anti-inflammatory. They also have magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, iron, and zinc. So benefits of cherry juice that they're researching, anti-inflammatory, antioxidative capacity, also can increase how much of tryptophan that we absorb. That's how it allows or can help with sleep. Um, and then increases your body's production of melatonin, which is also helping in the sleep cycle. I already mentioned that you should always check with the physician because in cherries, you can have interaction with medications. Okay, spinach. Spinach and other colorful vegetables have carotenoids, specifically leucine and zeaxanthin, um, and those can protect eyes from macular degeneration. They're also rich in vitamins A, C, K, and folate, minerals like iron and calcium, 25 calories for one cup. So you're getting a lot of nutrients um, for not a lot of energy, right? So that's a good thing if you're looking at weight loss or weight management. Two grams of protein, two grams of fiber, and the carotenoids that are included. I included this fun fact because I think it's fun. Um, my mother, who I, I believe their immune system is so strong. My mother is 75. My father is 80. He'll get mad. He'll turn 80 this year. So 79. <laughs> I should say the actual age. But um, she makes a smoothie for them. She's done this for the last 10 years. And she throws everything in. Everything. She hears tomato sauce is good and can protect you from um, prostate cancer. She'll throw in a dash of tomato sauce. She throws in olive oil. She throws in almonds. She throws in spinach, berries. I mean, they eat, they drink this smoothie twice a day. And these people are never sick. And I swear it's because of my mother's smoothie. So I told her, okay, mom, you need more calcium in your diet. She was taking a calcium supplement, which is fine and appropriate for her age. Uh, her iron levels were low. So spinach contains iron and calcium, but these minerals are blocked by a natural uh, chemical in plants called oxalates or oxalic acid. So the way you can unblock them is to blanch them. So you expose them to heat. Um, so you boil water, you dump the spinach in really quickly, one to two minutes, take them out and then put them in an ice bath. That ice bath will then allow them to cool. It also, it does another thing. It, it helps maintain the color of the vegetable. So it's still really bright green. And at the same time, that method allows the calcium and the iron to be available for the body to absorb. Whereas normally, you know, I have students that say, well, I don't need to eat meats because I get my iron from my spinach. Well, kinda, it's only 5% absorbable in its raw form. So you won't get a lot of iron and calcium out of spinach, but you will get it if you treat it properly. So we gotta kill those oxalates or minimize them. And we could do that through the blanching method. So now my mom, when she adds her spinach, she blanches them and then she puts them in the blender. And so now she could see it as a source of calcium. But she also uses soy milk as her base. So she's getting her protein in other ways. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm rambling. I want to keep track of time too. No worries, Yvonne. I think we got um, we got a request. Do you have any really good uh, uh, smoothie recipes? Simple, maybe like no less than four ingredients kind of uh, tip for us. Hey. I do, and I'll share I'll share one at the end. And it's not um, four <laughs> because nothing is uh, only four for me. 
um, we can make it for. So you could always modify recipes, which I do all the time. So I'll get like an idea and then I'll make it and adapt it to one. What do I have available in my kitchen at that time? And two, what do I have time for, right? Because we don't have time to do all this every day. So I'll, I'll share with you some of those. And actually one of them is a matcha tea um, smoothie, which will contain some of these other nutrients. So um, I wanna talk about green tea because black teas and green teas are really good to add to your diet. Um, when we look, like I said, at food patterns from other cultures, we start to see what do, what do the diets of people that have lowest rates of heart disease, for example, in the world, what are they consuming on a daily basis? Or what's part of their pattern of eating? And tea comes up all the time. So teas contain both black and green, contain flavonoids, which are really good to protect against heart disease. And green teas as well may um, help defend against certain cancers. So one of the um, phytochemicals in green tea is called epigallocatechin, and it's three gallate. So of course, it's this whole chemical structure. Um, we call it EGCG for short. And what's interesting about this is that in green tea, we get about 16 to 30% of dry weight to contain this catechin this um, antioxidant. In matcha green tea, we're gonna get almost up to 50%. So we're already getting more as matcha is a um, more concentrated type of green tea. So you'll notice it here uh, in the picture. Of course, this is a nice um, fancy whisk that's used for matcha. I cheat, I use a little <laughs> handheld um, blender, but it's your way of kind of incorporating it. So what we've learned is that concentration of EGCG um, increases with brewing time. So typically we steep tea for three, usually three minutes, four minutes. Uh, for this, if we wanna increase this antioxidant, we should be steeping for up to 10 minutes. So that will allow um, more of it to be released and more of us, more of it for us to, to consume. Vitamin C also increases um, bioavailability of this catechin, this um, phytochemical, and that's pretty important. So we want to add something like a squeeze of lemon juice to it, which would help increase the vitamin C activity. Um, Amino acids also help the immune system and they can fight some of these um, inflammatory process or responses. So let me just show you the matcha because I think, all right, so, so this is the matcha. This is like gold to me. Um, I'm, I'm a relatively cheap grocery store buyer you know i don't buy expensive all organic stuff but i will splurge on certain things in my life that's tea and it's spices i think those are really important to have good quality so um i'll buy organic you know milk sometimes and that stuff but if you look at the matcha it's um, highly concentrated so you only need a tiny bit so you would use about this much for uh eight ounce tea the smoothie that I'm going to show you today, or just um, give you the recipe, is um, two, one to two teaspoons of matcha. So I think that's a lot. I usually use only one. This is a, a very small amount, and it probably costs me at the tea shop. You're all going to throw up when I say it about $30. <laughs> so uh, this to me, like I said, is like gold. So uh, I will splurge on it, the better matcha. So like the tea shop guy says, well, you can get this one. It's a lot cheaper. It's like half off. That's what kind of, you know, they sell to the coffee shops. Uh, and you could just see the color difference. You could smell the difference. So I'm all about um, buying good teas. So that's the matcha. Um, 
and I'm really impressed with my 20 year old son who drinks matcha probably three times a week, especially during the winter, he'll have it every day. But now that it's starting to get warm, he doesn't have so much tea, but he really likes the matcha. Okay, so uh, other things I'll talk about like Reservatrol, another phytochemical that's found in red grapes, also found in nuts, um, peanuts, berries. So another reason why we wanna incorporate now, red and white wines contain Reservatrol. It's one of the reasons we all justify drinking, you know, so much wine. <laughs> it can help protect us against heart disease. Um, but we do want to limit what I, I actually sent it to a group of coworkers. It was um, a study that came, it wasn't a study, it was a survey that came out that identified how much alcohol consumption was done in 2020 and it was based on alcohol sales, it has increased significantly. And um, alcohol is one of those inflammatory, uh, it's not a nutrient, but it is, um, increases your calorie consumption as well. So it could be, it was definitely abused last year. And for whatever reasons those may be, but I hope that we can all get back to minimizing our alcohol intake. We've always suggested for men, it, moderate consumption is up to two drinks a day. That would be the like five ounce glass of wine, uh, two of them. And for women, one drink a day, which is um, one glass, five ounce glass, right? Not, well, I had one glass and it's like a giant glass. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, other things to incorporate, I love the um, soy, any fermented type of foods. And again, you could have, I just had miso soup the other night, um, tofu, really good. And they also contain the phytoestrogens, which can also help uh, reduce cholesterol and protect your arteries. Um, we have flavonoids in cocoa and chocolate that also defend against oxidation and can help reduce the tendency for your blood to clot. All right, so the last thing, or a few of the last things I wanna talk about is spices. Turmeric is one of those spices that's getting a lot of good press. I um, actually was at the tea shop and he had a whole turmeric display of turmeric teas and this little card that went with it and talks about anti-inflammatory. Um, makes a lot of claims. So I want to watch out for that because a lot of alternative, and this would be, spices are considered alternative therapies. Um, there isn't good solid research behind, or we're still gathering the research. So um, one book that I'll show you that has a lot of great recipes with the dietitian that I used to work with, um, she wrote this book. She's actually really good and totally into spicing. So I did a lot of research for her not on this book, but her last book. And um, I was finding a lot of good studies on turmeric, on cinnamon, on ginger. And so um, the next book she wrote was all about spices. And I just love this book and it has such great recipes. But when we give sort of recommendations to add um, some spices and herbs to your diet, it should be in always consultation with the doctor. So turmeric, for example, is basically generally considered safe. Um, some of the side effects could be indigestion and it's definitely not safe for people with gallbladder disease. So we don't want, you know, we wanna indicate there's risk potential because of what's called curcumin um, that's in the turmeric. So that's the ingredient that so many people are trying to get access to because it's claimed to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits, but we do always have to watch out how much we're adding. So the way the studies that are ongoing on turmeric um, improve antioxidant enzymes and remove free radicals, those highly charged particles that can do damage to cells and tissue, um, reduces inflammation and relieves heartburn. Turmeric is one of those flavors that many people just don't like. So um, in the 
I'll show you a wellness drink or a shot that I, I make um, based on one of the recipes from the book, but I've modified it again to what I like or what um, I have available at the time. So I'll show you that quick recipe. Black pepper, black pepper. Um, again, I told you the only things I'm, I'm a snob about are spices. And let me just show you. So here's my peppercorns. These are India. So I go to Penzi's and Penzi's used to be in Santa Monica. Love this place. Um, a student actually introduced me to them because they have a lot of international spices and it was an international student. So he gave me a little gift box at the end of the semester and it had these wonderful spices. So I was like, where is this place? So found it in Santa Monica, which is wonderful near the college. That store closed, they would only do shipping, but now there's one near my house. And so I order spices probably once a month, um, but I get my peppercorns there. And if you were here, you would smell the difference between this and what you get at, like at Costco. Like there is no comparison. So the ingredient in the pepper actually interacts with the turmeric and adds more benefits. So here's my turmeric. Um, Penzi's always has great sales too. Um, so the turmeric, it, like I spent more than $20. I got this for $1. So this was like gold to me. Um, cayenne pepper. There's also another shot, like a, there's immunity shots that you can take, but also like uh, metabolism booster shots. So adding cayenne with the um, black pepper into that is a really good uh, way to increase heart rate, which will help with metabolism. Uh, ginger, of course, I use ginger ground and also fresh, which again, the smells you can't, you can't get here from our video, but it definitely makes a difference. The great thing about pepper, the study on black pepper showed that it increases the bioavailability of several vitamins and minerals. So adding even just an eighth of a teaspoon can help absorb vitamins A, C, D, E, selenium, and um, iron and magnesium. Fun fact, the black pepper plus the turmeric, black pepper increases the effectiveness of curcumin found in the turmeric by 2000%. Were there any questions so far? Plenty. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, we have we have a bunch of really good questions. And so um, I don't know where to jump in, but I do want to question uh, I do want to bring up some questions that were asked a couple of minutes ago. Um, okay. Yeah. So do you so this one's gonna be a two-parter. So do you recommend any particular brand of ground flaxseed from Vanessa? And then uh Roland also then ask uh what are the benefit of hemp seed hearts or hemp seeds? Ooh, yes. He oh, I don't know why I shut my camera off. Okay, I'll start with the first question. Um, Bob's. Bob's has, is a great line. So if you, you can get Bob's on Amazon as well. So uh, our Bob's Market near the campus is a great place. And they have everything you could think of. Um, and it seems to be a little less expensive than Whole Foods. So um, I always recommend Bob's brand of flowers, Bob's brand of seeds. Um, they have starches like for cooking. So Bob's is actually um, a really good choice. Let me show you my hemp hearts. Hemp hearts, uh, I got my mom to add this one to her smoothie as well. So um, you only need a little bit, but am I switching over? No, but hemp hearts, um, 10 grams of protein. You can also get um, your omega-3s. So there's a lot of good benefits to adding hemp hearts to a smoothie. High in calories, so you don't wanna to put too much. I honestly just put a tablespoon in and um, I increase the benefit for omega-3s and protein. 
my son again brought this to my life because of the smoothie shop that he works at. But yeah, hemp hearts are really good to add. Fantastic. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, and I think we got, uh, we had an oatmeal conversation that was coming up. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, so some people, do you have any alternatives or any recommendations for um, oatmeal as a breakfast alternative? Alternatives for oatmeal. I know we're all kind of oatmeal out, I think. Uh, for me, I like, I, I don't have hot breakfast. I have to admit, <laughs> is that bad? Uh, but one of the things I found were Kodiak cakes. And I don't know if anyone has uh, tried them, but they're high protein pancakes. So easy to make um, and they're very thin. So you're not feeling too full with them and they're higher in protein, less carbs. That one's a good one to, to try out. Um, oatmeal I know is quick and easy. I used still cut oats. Um, I was going to say, if you want to add um, some sweetness, you could use the Ceylon cinnamon and Ceylon, there's a lot of um, good research coming out. Not, so Ceylon is different from cassia and you could sweeten things with this. So um, for me, this could be a way to spice up the oatmeal a little bit, adding some Ceylon cinnamon to it. Again, there is what's called Coumarin and that's kind of the beneficial antioxidant in cinnamon, but it can interfere with blood thinners. So if you are on medications, pregnant women can't be having too much cinnamon. Like, oh, I heard cinnamon's good. It can help lower blood glucose levels and everyone went cinnamon crazy. And then, people were having um, complications. So if you're pregnant, I wouldn't go too wild on too many spices. The research showed up to two teaspoons. So um, alternatives for breakfast, I have a really good app that gives me quick suggestions um, for breakfast. I give it to our college students because they don't eat breakfast and they're always coming to class, you know, not able to concentrate and not really thinking. It's called Eat to Win, the number two. And it has some wonderful, quick, easy suggestions based on your calorie level as well. So it, like snack ideas, shake ideas, um, and it could be less ingredients. So that could be a, a good option for you. Great. This Thank is you. the, um, sure, this is the Power Spicing book wonderful recipes. I highly recommend. I put um, bellernutrition.com, her website for free recipes. What I love about her, she, um, she gives you how to do her spice blends yourself. So you just have the um, combinations that she recommends. And then um, you don't have to buy her spice line, but she has one available. So that's kind of nice. This is the matcha smoothie that I was um, talking about it's kind of like my mom's smoothie she throws everything in but you like today i don't have kale so i have spinach so i'm going to use that i have my hemp uh, seeds so i'm going to use that or hemp hearts and then i add just some spices that i i want to add because i like the flavor and i could also bump up the um, nutrient the antioxidant power so I wanna show you the immunity. Um, you know, I teach a foods lab on Tuesdays on Zoom and it, my camera never shows everything. So I'm gonna show you. So in this immunity and um, shot, I try to do, I was buying immunity booster shots, spending somewhere between three to $4 a shot. And I said, that's enough. This is too expensive, I can make it by myself. So I add coconut water, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, like one teaspoon, because it's very powerful. So half a cup of coconut water, one teaspoon apple cider vinegar. You add a quarter teaspoon of your um, ginger and turmeric. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of the black pepper. And if I wanted to go wild, I could add um, cayenne, but I'm not going to. 
And I have my little power whisk. So I just whisk this up. And what I love about the Nutribullet, that's what I'm using, the container, I could store it in my fridge and make these, you know, today and tomorrow. So I double the recipe. And you need a splash of orange juice or lemon juice. You could use fresh. Um, I'm gonna start with that. So then you put it in a little shot glass because now it's just fun. And then I drink that. So if I'm having a bad allergy day, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a shot. I put ice on it as well. So it's nice and chill and um, I could at least enjoy it. So that to me, so using coconut water as my base, giving myself some electrolytes as well. And then a um, little bit of the apple cider vinegar, a dab of orange juice. And then all I do is store this in my fridge. So like, I always ask like the family here, hey, does anyone need a shot? <laughs> and so they'll grab some because it's freshly made and then I'll make another batch, you know, tomorrow or something. So that's, that's what I'm doing throughout <laughs> COVID. I've been having a lot of immunity shots and I just stopped buying them because they are really good when you buy them. But um, I figured the cost, I'm just gonna make my own and I can make it taste good too. So I've tried a lot of different spices as well. Um, so that book's um, Power Spicing has a recipe um, that I've kind of tailored a little bit. They also have a digestive immunity shot um, and they also have the metabolism booster shot. Okay, so try some of these out again making sure that you speak to a health, your healthcare physician if you're on any type of special diet or you're pregnant or you're on medications, you always wanna consult with someone. We wanna make sure that there's sound research behind everything we suggest. And I just like to take a step back and look at patterns of eating so that each meal is very nutrient dense, that everything we eat has a lot of power packed nutrients in what we're eating and start to take away the added sugar, start to take away the fast foods, start to take away the alcohol and let the diet be something that could be really powerful for you to fight disease. We need to increase or improve our health. We aren't a healthy country right now. We need it back and this is one way we could do it. So I encourage you to just try different things, cook more. Um, and then I just started planning some of my own little herbs so that I could have access to things rather than, you know, I realized grocery stores sometimes aren't accessible. Who would have thought that? So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do what I can, what I can do at home. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions in the time remaining. Um, yes, I, th I think there's a, there's a huge demand right now to definitely see your PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I think we, I think a bunch of us would love to see this again, uh, see this information. Um, I do apologize for the folks that weren't, weren't able to see Yvonne's demo table. Um, try to do our best with trying to switch in, uh, with, with around, uh, around the cameras, but we'll, um, we'll oh, see. Oh, really? That's not good. Yeah, I think it was more on my end more than anything else. So I'll apologize and, and take responsibility for that. But uh, let me see what I can do in post-production and um, hopefully I can switch the cameras around uh, in, in, the, in the Zoom recording. So thank you all for, uh, for being flexible with that. I think we do actually have a couple more stray, uh, stray thoughts and stray, uh, stray comments, but I think Deborah just posted one and so did Gina. What can we do to curb serious sugar cravings? Oh, that one's, that one's my vice. Yes, that's a really good one. Let's start there. Yes, so um, my partner here eats cereal in the middle of the night. It's the, I, I don't even understand it because I don't have that craving, but he started gaining weight. And he's like, what is it? What do you think it is? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the 45 grams of carbs you're eating at 2 a.m. So um, he said, what should I eat then? <laughs> he switched to um, 
yogurt. And so he added the flaxseed granola to his yogurt. And that kind of helped that crunchiness, I think, that he was craving and the carb craving. So it now contains a little more protein. Um, it's Greek yogurt, so more protein instead of just carbohydrates. So that to me is key. Cereals increase blood glucose levels. It's one of those high glycemic index foods. So we want to um, minimize having them in the evening because we don't want glucose levels to be up in the middle of the night. So you're waking up with high glucose levels, which triggers an insulin response. And insulin is a growth hormone. So it will grow, right? It'll grow two things. If you're active, it'll grow muscle. If you're inactive, like sleeping, it'll grow fat. So we want none of that. You want more protein in the middle of the night if you get those cravings. Um, so he switched to yogurt and granola. In the evening, I even tell him go even you know, earlier. You need to be full before you go to bed. So having that evening snack that could be nuts, that could be the yogurt at that time, will really help minimize cravings in the middle of the night. Thank you, Yvonne. And I think the uh, last question will go to uh, Gina, who's, uh, who's asked, what can I add to my smoothies besides yogurt? I know we just talked about it, to increase my ca uh, the calorie, uh, sorry, the calcium intake. Yeah, so you should, you would use like a soy-based uh, product that could increase, or almond milk, that could be your calcium source. Um, you're looking for a thickener as well. So switching out the yogurt, maybe for a tablespoon of the hemp parts could be a way to do that. Almonds contain calcium. So you could add that or have that as a snack with the smoothie. That's what I told my mom, like, do I really need almonds in the smoothie? Can I just eat them? So she's like, you do what you want. So I always have her smoothie, no almonds, and I just chew them. So at least I can get some almond um, calcium that way as well. So calcium and the spinach will also contain a little bit of calcium that's available. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Yvonne, this was an amazing, amazing session. I think everybody can resolutely agree like this was this was an awesome session to have. Everybody throw us a heart if you um, have something new to eat for, for lunch today. Ooh, um, good beautiful. question. Yeah, and for everybody that's also still here, throw us a party hat emoji if you want to see more sessions like this, because I think this is, uh, this is such a great pre-lunch kind of conversation to have for all of our wellness folks. So um, yes, absolutely, Vanessa, more sessions like this. So we'll, Yvonne, we, we hope to have you again in, in the near future. Um, and uh, for, for another session, we'd love to have you. And so uh, thank you all so much. Uh, and uh, thank you, Yvonne, and the, the chat's coming in. Thank you again, Yvonne, and um, I think that brings us at 12.01. If anybody would like to stay around for just a little bit longer and actually pose a question verbally to Yvonne, I think we can offer a little bit of time. Yeah. But I, uh, I believe this formally ends our presentation. Thank you all so much. Hey, thank you so much. I'll stick around. Hi, Yvonne. Hi. Hi, it's Vanessa. Um, Hi, I, how are you? How are you? Um, I just had a quick question. I was looking um, to get ground flaxseed and um, I noticed that some brands say uh, something like cold pressed or uh, I, I don't remember what the terminology was, but is there a difference? Is there one that you recommend in particular if you're going to add it to like your smoothie or um, 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 the way, you know what I would, I, I think it's important to get organic when you go with seeds. Okay. Um, so that, that would be my only recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. And, um, I, Deanna, I did see your hand raised. Did you want to go ahead and ask your question right, uh, right now at this moment? Yes. Hi, Ms. Ortega. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. So my question is, what would you recommend, um, for breakfast for like a type two diabetic? Yeah, that's a good question. So you want to balance out your carbs and your protein and your fat. Everything yeah. I eat always has that in mind. And I don't have type two mm -hmm. diabetes, but my sister does. 
So okay. one way to help, you know, she would tell me I'm waking up with high glucose levels. Uh -huh. What do you, I would tell her, what are you eating at night? And so we would always start from that point and then okay. revise it a little bit, see what works for you. Uh, so you would may want to go more protein at night. You also want to make sure your carbohydrate mm -hmm. intake is um, evenly distributed at each meal or snack. So we're looking for balance. Um, okay. I, for her, I said, you're not doing well with the oatmeal. Um, she went to more protein-based breakfast, like a hard-boiled mm -hmm. egg, something she could do quick because she mm -hmm. also works really early. So she wanted mm -hmm. something that was fast. So she would prep like a hard-boiled egg. Um, she would have some spinach. She, so we went more towards the carbs coming from vegetables rather than coming from whole hmm. grains or fruit. So um, okay. that was one method. And I told her, you know, you may get hungry because you're not getting enough fiber. So, you know, for her, she had like a small corn tortilla, those little mini street taco tortillas. Right, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So she would have one of those with an egg and some spinach and she mm. felt really good. She also started uh, walking before she went to bed she'd walk 20 minutes around the block and that helped lower her glucose levels in the morning as well. So we okay. were trying all these different ways because she was mm -hmm. waking up so high. So, mm -hmm. and it was affecting everything right for the next day. So mm -hmm. um, I think she, she actually sends me pictures all the time of what her numbers are when she wakes up. So mm -hmm. she's now waking up, you know, she was like 145 for her blood sugars. And now she's waking up at 80. And it's oh, wow. amazing. So yeah, the changes sure. she's made um, really have helped. And so she okay. feels better. She has more energy and it kind of starts her day off a lot better than what she was feeling. So I okay. recommend just trying different things to see what works well for you and okay. um, looking at what are some, when you're having snacks or light breakfast, you want to look at what are um, low glycemic index foods to help you plan that. Okay, perfect. Great answer. Thank you so much, Cyrus. Sure. This was great. Everybody oh. have a great rest of your day. Be yeah, safe. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Deanna, always great seeing you. And I think you that, too. Uh, have a good one. Bye, Deanna. Bye. <laughs> and Faruzan, uh, pardon me if I mispronounce it, but Faruzan also has a question as well too. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and post your question, Faruzan. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Yvonne. That was great. Um, I yeah. have a question about spinach. Uh, does sauteing it also release the, the oxalates or uh, blanching is the, the key? Uh, blanching is the key, but heat helps. Um, so heat helps reduce it uh, or allows uh, for more absorption, but too much heat will then reduce the antioxidant power. So that's what that balance is. So it's exposure to heat, but then quick, you know, stop the heating process. The good thing, so this is where we kind of like struggle between raw and fresh and um, or cooked is that heat increases folate which is a really important vitamin as well. So the heat will increase the folate, but it'll destroy the vitamin C. <laughs> so it's kind of like balancing things out. And that's why I see like how you use the spinach. So it, let's say I want to saute it because I want some garlic and onion and, and oils, which are also healthy. Then maybe it goes along with um, tomatoes. So I'm getting the vitamin C from another source or other antioxidants. So that the spinach is, is the vegetable, but we're getting um, different nutrients from different vegetables at the same time. I think that would be the way I would suggest. So let me sh tell you um, a trick the chef taught me with sauteed spinach, because I don't know if, um, okay, let's see if the camera works now, but I don't know if you get that kind of gritty feeling from your um, spinach. But he taught me a little bit of uh, nutmeg. Oh. So here's some nutmeg. And I thought, oh, no, this isn't going to taste good. I couldn't believe. So all I do is, this is, again, my Penzi nutmeg. I just tiny bit and then put it on your cooked spinach. 
it takes the way that flavor your children will love i mean if you have children that's how like it, good it is so it changes the flavor instantly and it's just amazing so nutmeg and spinach that combination who would have thought actually is really good All right thank you so much mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, this is the last chance for questions. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll be ending the, we'll be closing the Zoom room in about 30 seconds, so. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Thank you, thank you, Faruzan. All right, I think, um, Yvonne, I think we're all set. Thank you, Edna, and thank you for being very patient with us with the with the camera switching, so. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. That's too bad, but um, yeah, like you said, Cyrus, maybe in post-production, you could see what's going on. Yeah, that, that's why we always have a good rec like a recording of it. Let me, let me see what I can do, so. <laughs> Is there a way I can still read the chat? I, I kind of want to see what I should add or what, you know, in case I do it in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I can also uh, forward you the chat as well, too, because Zoom always sends me a text uh, dot text file. So I can always forward you the chat. This was a great session, Yvonne. Like, oh, my goodness. I, I, the, the, the amount of questions in the chat, this is the most active I've seen it in a while. So oh, I wish I would have spent more time on that. No, I, I, it was perfect content, in my opinion. So okay. like usually when the chat is like very active, that means everybody's very engaged and very much attuned. So I think that that's uh, that's a just speaks to your beautiful uh, talents at presenting. So <laughs> OK, great. Well, thank you so much, Cyrus, for doing all this. Absolutely. And thank you, guys, you for you, you guys have put up a, a pretty good agenda for wellness and it's it's really impressive. So I'm going to try to attend some of those other sessions too, because exercise is important and fitness. Yeah, definitely. We'd be delighted if you can. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Yvonne. You have a wonderful rest of your day. And um, I'll definitely share, share this all back out with uh, Sherry. I think this okay. is one of them. Stand out. So have a good you. day. You too. Thank you, Yvonne. Okay, bye.